Okay, Jenna. All right. We, we got it. We're going to read the minutes from the old meeting and after we bring the meeting to order and... Yeah, okay, you all ready? Call the meeting to order. Okay, the meeting is to order. Jenna, you want to read the minutes from the... Yeah. Uh, the last meeting um, uh, was February 19th, 2020, regular meeting of GMGC committee. A golf course committee was held Wednesday, February 19th. Um, at the golf course, those in attendance included uh, on, the on the right when I have the last names here, Kenny, Chip, Obi, Felicia, Tim, Jenna, Wells, jo and Joe. I did correct that. Vice President Wells uh, opened the meeting in the absence of President uh, Doug. Minutes from the January meeting were approved. Wells reported, old oh business, Wells, Wells reported that the presentation to the city went well and was received well by the council. Over reported that the city council approved the new rates. An increase in cart fees will also be coming as well as an increase in other items sold from the pro shop. Also, since council has approved the fee schedule, there will be no more range ball specials once membership is renewed. New business. Wells reported that the green flags be mixed up. OB indicated this should already have uh, been started and will remind Joe to do this. Wells reminded the meeting of renting the pro shop kitchen uh, space out to someone to provide food sales. A discussion ensued on different options. OB indicated that no alcohol or beverage sales would go with the rental because of license and contracted agreements. OB and Felicia will continue to explore different avenues. Wells also requested to have our meeting room open to golfers on a daily basis. When the event center has a meeting using the space, the room would be vacated by golfers for use, use by the event center. This request could be done in-house. There was no objection. Every reported that golf course will be hosting the Tony Caldwell tournament as well as shooting the bull in March, and the cup will start the 1st of April and go through the end of November. The committee requested that we have something special for St. Patrick's Day for the community. Recommendations included wearing green and getting a reduced fee or food or some combination of other incentives to bring golfers out. Wells recommended that the front of the greens on 3, 14, 15, and 17 be filled in due to drainage problems. This matter is tabled until wet season is over and the course dries out some. Joe brought up the need for drinking water to be on the course and trash receptacles be appropriately lined with plastic bags to help keep the tra trash off the course. Obi will remind Joe of this issue. Chip inquired uh, if the pro shop was being informed of the people who park in the old parking lot and proceeding to the course to play. Are the players checking in and are they members? Chip brought up the issue of liability. Obi indicated that many of those parking in the old parking lot are using the driving range as well as the course. And they call the pro shop to check in before starting the rounds. Obi and staff will continue to monitor this. The internet has been upgraded. Sign-in sometimes does not work. OB will inform IT. Jenna brought up the course bathrooms need cleaning. OB will see that this is done. Chip indicated that sand is needed for the driving range to repair divots. OB will speak with Doug to have this problem solved. OB reported that the pro shop is slowly taking shape. Apparel and golf merchandise will come, be coming soon. To the pro shop, a new point of sale program has been chosen. The contract has been sent to the city lawyers for review. This should help get more clarity to sales. A new name for GMGC was discussed, and the new name uh, for the golf course will be Goldsboro Golf Course. There being no further business, the meeting was adjourned. Respectfully submitted, Jenna Price. Uh, I make a recommendation that we approve the minutes. I'll second. Okay. Financial report, through May, we are 40, physical year, we're $47,000 to the good. So we should have another, we made money. Old business, recycle. 
thought we already they said we were going to do that. I haven't seen any trash cans out there. Did we not say we were going to do that? Yeah, you said you all wanted to do it, and okay. we have made the contact. Have they not? What? The recycling bins. The recycling bins are behind the, are, we are doing it. It's behind the, there are two recycle bins by where we wash the golf carts, or actually three. And they're and the rest are behind the gated area behind the. Um, I think we need to educate everybody because I didn't know they were there. Mm -hmm. We um, we had trouble with them being full before, and apparently, prior to us starting the recycle, actually it's been going on even before you guys brought it up. The only reason why it wasn't being used because they filled the recycling bins with other stuff. So we have we've had them emptied, and um, and now they're just ready to be used. So I'll put up more signs if I have to, and bring some more out around. Do we have the POS system now? Not yet. So that's why we are waiting on. Um, we we were given um, finance time to get through the fiscal budget, and with all the stuff there going on with the fiscal year, um, I, I talked with uh, Catherine last week, and she said that she will pay. She'll be able to have more time to uh, to get it up and going. Hopefully, the next month or so. So, but we are still going to do it. I haven't I haven't heard no put it that way. So. Well, I bring it up because almost every time that Bud comes, Bud in particular, uh, it doesn't work. The computer doesn't work, and he can't pay. And then you have to wait till Joe can call down to somebody. Who 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 is it? Bud. It's not his car, because it was three people right behind him. The same thing happened to. Oh. See, so they have to wait till after eight o'clock. Then they have to call somebody. Then they have to reset the computer. Then they have to pay later. When are we going back to cash? Um, as long as the governor does not revert back a stage, we are going to we're going to start accepting cash. So hopefully next week, if everything remains the way it is right now. Okay. Uh, we'll start wearing gloves again. We'll take extra precautions, but we'll get the cash back out. Okay. You got a copy of this new business? I, I know. Yeah. Okay, you're up. Um, no, I don't have a copy of the new business. I mean, sorry. Your induction of the new superintendent. Yeah. I'll, read, I'll read it to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, some of you are already aware. Um, we have uh, a new sheriff in town on the golf course. Um, Doug Anderson, he's, uh, he has worked under Joe for give or take 20 years, um, not just here, elsewhere also. Uh, Doug is a superintendent, um, a member of the GSSA. Did I say that correctly? GSAA. Um, GSAA. He is also a graduate from Wayne Community College and Turf grass management, is that correct? Um, and uh, we're happy to we're happy to have him. A little new energy in the in the um, in the maintenance department. Uh, he's definitely going to need some help with this change. It's it's there's a little um, it's gonna it's gonna be a challenge before we get to the where we're smooth, but we're working what we have right now. So um, so far he's. You've already seen what he's already started doing on the course, so which everything is positive. Hopefully by this time next year we'll look at ourselves and say, we did, we made a good move. So if I could add something, Obi, as a city manager, this was my decision. Um, I would have wanted to streamline the superintendent under the director of golf rather than having two separate uh, heads, if you will, out there, always working back and forth for the good of the course, but I wanted to to streamline this uh, using Obi's expertise. One, one of the reasons why we ho hired Obi is he's not just a teaching pro, he also has run and been the superintendent of golf courses. So I think uh, that will work well along with Doug here. So uh, I look forward to that. And uh, Joe has will be the superintendent of all our other sports turfs. So that's the way that laid out. Welcome. Appreciate it. Glad to have you, sir. Really glad to have you. Appreciate the opportunity. Okay, the next, see, we're going to break you right in. I want to real quick, Doug, because the next item here says course greens and fairways update from you. All right, the greens, as everybody knows the conditions right now, we have gotten a lot better in the past few weeks. 
Uh, we done a gypsum flush two and a half, three weeks ago, and that's where we've seen our biggest impact. Colors started coming back, but we still had some thinning areas and some bare spots on the greens. Uh, me and Ovia talked, we were going to do a core verification on the 22nd and 23rd, that'll be next week. And then what we plan on doing, uh, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go around, verticut the greens, clean them up with a mower, come back with a heavy top dressing, then we'll come through with the aerators and punch them. Steel drag mat, all the cores in, blow the breeze off, roll the water greens. And it's what we have done right now, being that uh, the asset with the turf, turf guys really helped us a bunch. But to save on some stuff, I uh, took the fairways and made them quite a bit bigger so I can be able to spray some more perimeter. there, just kind of cut down on uh, the mowing of the rough that takes about four days to do. So we should get that down pretty easy. Um, made the aprons a lot smaller and also the dew pads we eliminated. We're looking at the T-more, it takes about eight hours, so I think we're trimming back to about five hours on that. Speaking the microphone oh. so they can hear you um, next time. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm new to all this, so bear with me. <laughs> Are there any plans to fix the two waste bunkers that just absolutely look like the one on 11, one on 18? And nine. Is there any plans to do anything? So what's the, what's the issue you want what done with them? The well, way they're, they're not properly, I, I guess there's, there's still grass not growing, uh, not growing in them. Um, it, it's, I mean, and I, I don't know, Doug can probably answer this a little bit more. It, it's probably a bigger project to do it in, in the middle of the year. As yeah, right now with staff. It, yeah, especially with the staffing issues and. That's not my question. My question is. What are we going to do? What's the plan? How about sand traps? I like sand traps. I heard some people don't. I don't have any problem with it. That's yeah. part of golf. Does it make it too hard? No, I think the sand traps are, I think if the sand traps were, I think our tra sand traps are fine. No, he's talking uh, about where, where, those two where these, where these, oh, and They used to be sand traps. traps, right? And you made it simpler in the grass or something? Yeah, we eliminated them a few years ago just to cut back on the maintenance on raking the bunkers, edging the bunkers. I mean, that takes a long time to do it. Without a big expense, they can't make them like the bunkers we have on the course. They'd have yeah. to call those people back in. And mm -hmm. which well, we, we can easily get them grass bunkers redone. I mean, it would just take going in there, cutting it out, replacing them with a new side. But a lot of them areas come from the lack of irrigation. You know, we ain't been able to water at night for the past yeah. two years. Yeah. And that area, as they get so dry, traffic blowers and mowers go all over them and you just blow the material away. Well, when we coming up to uh, the place up at the shore, and the two excursions that we had in the last year, they have what I call waste bunkers. You know what I'm talking about? I know you know what I'm talking about. I do. About. That's another option. We could just turn them into waste bunkers. I still got to maintain waste bunkers. But, but, well, I know, but all you got to do is rake them. They're like ground up. Actually, cells. you don't have to rake waste bunkers. <laughs> you can just Sorry, rake. You got to level them out. Sorry? Sorry, I'm late. All right. We'll forgive you. I'd just like to see us come up with some kind of plan to do something with them. And, and, and in my opinion, I just feel like that we ought to level it and reap it. Just like you said, plant sod and just do away with the, with the terrain where it won't wash, where we can ride over it with a mower. I don't know if it takes a grade and just going down there and pushing it down and making it You do that on 11, but you can't do that on 18. No, that's right. Because right in front of the grain. right in front of the grain. I mean, we can slope it and remove that front half off to where it fall into the bunker, but then you're going to get a lot of balls that hit on that bunker or on that slope and roll back into the bunker. And, and no, 18. Oh, I see what you're saying. 18, we're talking about a project that will shut down that green until it's made. We have to make a temporary green in front of the water. That green would not be playable because of all the work they're going to do. You don't want people driving, walking through there. Well, you don't dare do what he just said. Though. If you just go in there and slope it, the terrain, all the balls will roll back in the, in the pond. Yeah. 
That's not a good idea. And, and not for all the seniors I have. Not for all the balls I've seen bounce up on the green from there. <laughs> <laughs> so, for I've seen yours bounce up a couple of times too. Everybody. <laughs> I mean, I personally think we can make an attempt to, to try to grow it in. I mean, we got plenty of fertilizer. We got the water. I can manually. I like your idea on that one. Just, yeah. just get rid of it. You you guys got the equipment for that, or you need public works to come we in? Need, if we're going to do any kind of earth shaping, yeah. I mean, all we have is a backup. Do you want to wait for the winter time to do that, that kind of thing? A, a winter time project, or at least the end of the winter, maybe January, February, would probably be the best time for something like that. Okay. All right. Obi, I don't know what this is. Moving, uh, moving pro shop and upgrade. Yeah, it, um, it's come up uh, in discussions on uh, what we could do with the pro shop in order to allow the food and beverage to flourish in the clubhouse. And uh, one of the ideas I came up with was to move the clubhouse into the old bag room, utilize both the bag room and the other room beside it um, to create a pro shop. Um, um, I think it's big enough for a pro shop. I think it's just big enough for a pro shop. Of course, it won't be where people will be housed. You're talking about people are storing their clubs now? Storing their club, knocking out the wall that goes into that other room. Well, knocking out, not knocking out the complete wall, just putting a little mm -hmm. arch. arch there and creating a little little room there, television or whatever. And if people want to go out and drink, they'll go cater to the, um, to the food and beverage area, whoever leases out the building. At least to me, that will give whoever leases out that place a fighting chance of doing something there. Now, whether we will get somebody to take it, that's that's that would be a battle on its so own. So, if we did that, we we would be totally out of the building we're in now. We'll be well. We won't we won't we won't be in the building. Yes, we'll be totally out, but we'll still have access to it. In other words, during the day or in the morning when we come in, we'll open up the back door to the restrooms. And so on and so forth, so people can still use the restrooms. If you I mean, wanted to have an event, you could have an event in there. And just it, yeah, if you, if you want to have an event, you'd have to have it. I mean, the catering has to come from the person who. There's enough room. If you remodel to have tables in there for people to sit. Where? In the in the remodeled area. If you're going to remodel. Well, it's not like we're going to house 20 people in there. This would just be probably two or three tables enough to house probably 12 people yeah 12 people can sit down i mean if we if we design it right now yeah it's going to take money with the COVID 19 we probably probably it's not really uh it's kind of a distance what, what what if you just use the space that you're talking about by the golf carts for strictly pro shops selling goods and in that other area if you're looking out on the golf course to the left, have an office for you or something to work out of. Yeah, I guess. And then, and then the, where you're in right now would just be for sit down, lunch, whatever, grab a drink, and anybody can do that at any time they want. Yes. And then if they wanted to rent the facility out, the GEC portion, for an event supporting a tournament or whatever, they can do that as well. Yeah. Does that make some sense to pe people on the committee? It, it makes sense. It makes sense. Uh, anybody, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, that, that probably wouldn't be the golf course's problem. I would, we could turn that over to the GEC, and the GEC could rent that out and work it. You know, yeah. think something to talk about. It's, it wouldn't be, wouldn't be part of the golf course revenue. Right, but it means that. I wanted to ask you one more. Right now, I can go, right now I can go out for a month. Are we are we at what stage? Yeah, we have food or anything? I didn't hear. Do we have food? You're breaking up. Can you Break talk? Up. Say it again. Okay. Right now, do we, what stage? We get outside dining where we, people can get a uh, hot dog and sit outside. But where are we at? Uh, food for us? Oh, he's wanting an update on where y'all are at getting a vendor to supply food. We've had people come in and, um, can you hear us? That's not what you wanted, right? <laughs> you said, where are we right now currently? Yeah, we sell food. Are you gonna we hire sell food. Oh, uh, going back to selling food? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah, he's wanting to know when we're gonna go back to 
Because selling the hot dogs and hot stuff. dogs and the candy and taking cash and that is it. That's kind of a tricky area because we if hot dogs are being sold where people go there back there and fix their own hot dogs. Right. If, if I were going to sell hot dogs with what all this stuff going on, I'd have to man somebody back there to fix the hot dogs and hand them out. Right. I don't have the personnel for that. Right, right. And now I thought about it once trying to coming in early, getting some guys to fix hot dogs in simple packets and just putting them out there. I mean I can try that. I don't feel like they're gonna sell. I think it I was think we gotta wait till the corona thing's over done. Yeah, I think we gotta wait till that thing funnels out or have somebody back there. Yeah, I was just wondering I know we did that like places are open where you dining, so I was just wondering yeah, the place is open for dining, but like where I was last night, the tables are all spread out. So the way Obi's been doing it with somebody going back there and fixing their own, you'll have three or four people back there rubbing elbows. Yeah. Well, I hear you. You know, where we at? What are you looking for, your dog? No, I think. <laughs> Right. So, I mean, as far as um, that, as, as, um, as Tim said, I, I, you know, I feel like it would be a good idea. Right now, probably it doesn't look like it is a good idea. Nobody wants to be in the food and beverage business right now with all this stuff going around. Um, but that's something that we can table and look for in the future. As far as moving the clubhouse, uh, I, mean, I mean, moving the pro shop. I mean, if we could do it this year, that would be great. I mean, it wouldn't bother me to do it this year at all. And what's, what's the advantage of moving the pro shop? Sorry? What would be the advantage of moving it to that location? Uh, basically, the advantage is to allow food and beverage to flourish. In other words, we won't have to share room with them. That's number one reason. I mean, the other reasons you could think of, the whole building will go to the, GC, uh, uh, to the event center we won't have to pay the light bill. All the bills that come with the building, we won't have to pay it. In a sense, it'll save us a little money. I mean, um, I couldn't tell you exactly how much. I may, maybe Felicia, do you have any idea how much we pay? It's a no. percentage of square it's, 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 we, we pay a percentage, so we'll still be paying something because everything's connected. So when you think about moving out to where the bag storage is as far as like the electricity, um, you know, cooling, heating, all that stuff that has to go in there. We're still going to be paying something. Paying something. So if we're paying 25% of the electric bill now, it may be cut down to 15%, but we're still going to be paying something. Based on your square foot. Yeah. From, from my perspective, it's worth pricing, is, pricing is it out. Are you renovating other, other building? Sorry, repeat. Is there any renovating or any, anything we're going to do to that building? There's going to be some cost to it. It's not, it's not, I mean, it's not that we can just go move all the bags out and just move everything over there. I mean, you're talking about a little paint, probably um, some structural um, repairs that we have to do. It, that's not knocking out the wall. We could save that for a later date. Um, Is that going to do away with the bag storage? Sorry? But long term, long term, there won't be any back money. They, there will not be any back storage anymore if we do this. Currently, we have about six people who utilize that place, maybe less. Oh, I'm all for that. Then. Who is there any uh, heat and air conditioning? Not yet, no, sir. We just use window air conditioning. And that thing be good to keep all the cars too, right? Buy an air conditioner, cools and heat. I missed that, Kenny. What'd you say? I think it'd be good to keep up with the carts and everything. Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, we'll probably have to change the way we line the carts out so we can see, uh, so we can look out that window. But like I said, first and foremost, this thing was decided based on utilizing or uh, renting the, 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 the other side out to a food and beverage to make it more convenient for the customer to have some place or something to do after they play or before. And in a sense, try to make money off a lease and so on and so forth. I mean, right now that doesn't look like it's, because of COVID-19, it looks like it's, it's a lost cause, but it's still something I'd like to keep on the table. And I agree. 
Who would get the money from the food? If we turn the building over to the event center, apparently they will be getting it. I mean, it doesn't directly affect the golf course, or but it would still, it would still. I think it would still, it would still affect our bottom line. It would still affect whether people use our golf course for an event. So, I mean, I think we'll benefit from it. You just may not see it just on paper, just how much are we... I mean, it doesn't have to be under the GEC. It could be under the golf course director's piece. We'd have to talk about the benefits, about plus the and minuses, problem. but I think it's worth figuring out what the cost would yeah, be to be to redo the other facility, and then at some point, if someone wants to do the business there, it may be worth the investment. Okay. okay. I think that's where considering moving uh, the pro shop, I think some considerations should be made towards the uh, picnic area between number nine and the, and the range. And filling that in and creating a pro shop there with uh, um, where you can stop at the turn, get drinks, the, the pro have more eyes on the golf course from that, that vantage point. You can have um, restrooms at the turn, I think it would benefit us more to utilize that space than it would be uh, to just move into a storage room. That's a pretty good idea. That, that is a good idea. I, well, I, 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 talk, I talked with Felicia sometime, probably three weeks ago, she was looking at a the trailer that's behind the, um, what was that place called? The fire station. What's, what's the name of that street uh, again? Right up on, um, Harris. Harris Street. Yes, it's a triple wide trailer. Um, if we were going to renovate, and I, don't get me wrong, I have no idea how much it will cost, but I guarantee you if we're going to renovate that little picnic room into a pro shop, we just might as well build a new building because there's nothing. I mean, you have to do a whole new sewer. You have to, I mean, it's, it's going to cost a lot of money. So, but I thought, what if we get that triple white trailer and put it exactly where that clubhouse was before in the past? That's right. that, that would be awesome. Absolutely, I think that's that sounds a good here. idea. That now, awesome. I'm saying this, and Felicia's giving me the eye because she had plans for that trailer. So, <laughs> so. Don't, don't you need to be near the carts for somebody to oversee and make sure they don't just take off? Uh, the carts will be, uh, we would change the staging areas for the golf court if that building is put there. I mean, the, the, the cart staging area won't be on top of the building. It won't be on top anymore. We'll pull the carts down. How do you keep them out of the weather? No, he's going to lock them up and keep them under the roof at night, but when he's staging them, they're going to move them down. Move them down. Hmm. Right. I mean, I've, I mean, everywhere else I've worked, the cart, the cart barn is a quarter of a mile away from the pro shop, so that's, okay. that's just more exercise for us to do. But that is not far at all. And if we have to, if we can look at buying attachments for the cart, so we can pull two or three of them at the time when we go up, up and down the hill. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are options. Well, that's a good idea. I think uh, council is going to be inclined to support you once you show how you continue to make money on the course itself. So, hopefully, if you make more money, you have more money available to do those things. Okay. And Obi, if you use the um, uh, oh. oh storage room if you convert it into a pro shop before you before you get too far ahead you may need to contact the inspections department because you may have to put in bathrooms yeah, we yeah. Uh, they may have to be hey, we got the trailer you can put the pro shop inside the trailer sorry if you got the double wide trailer you should have enough space for a pro shop in there yeah i i, I agree with that triple wide would be uh, it's a better. triple wide, isn't it, Felicia? Yeah, the old schoolhouse. School it's room. huge. It's, it it's actually the, the triple wide that I believe Watch may have used um, behind oh, yeah. the hospital. Yeah, yeah. And um, they had like a couple of them that they donated to the city. So one of them was used at um, like Harris Street right? for the fire station four when they were doing uh, renovations right. there. It's yeah. ours. Oh, it's already ours. It belongs to the city, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's ours. It belongs to the city. Oh, well, that would be marvelous. So, like Tim said, if we continue showing that we're making money, they'll probably let us have it. 
Is it, is, it, is it in good shape? Does it look good? I we mean, tried to get in it the other day, but no one was there to let us in. I haven't been back yeah. yet. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I know you don't like the cologne uh, microphone, but Brad, have you been in there lately? Okay. No, because I know talking with Scott Williams in IT, uh, he said the trailer looked fairly decent inside because they had to go and run fiber in there. So it's in fairly decent shape from what I understand, but like Obi said, we haven't had a chance to physically look inside. There will be a cost involved when we look to uh, relocate it because, again, when okay. the city obtained the triple wide, it didn't cost the city anything. They didn't have to purchase it, but there was like a fee involved. I want to say $10,000 jumps in my mind for them to move it. Mm -hmm. And then, like, mm -hmm. when you get to its location, of course, you have to hook it up to water, right. sewer, electric, all of those things. So it's not free, free, free. No, the, I think the, we're still the, out of The triple pounds. wide is free, but again, when you look at you have a triple wide and you have to pay a minimal cost to do all that hookup versus building something new, yeah. it is definitely a cost savings. And there's going to be, there's going to, uh, some landscaping is going to have to be done. We just can't have some, I mean, that place is slow. They're, we're going to have to put pillars and stuff. It's I, it's going to be a major project to, to get done. What about, what about where that parking lot is above yeah. the... Uh, I was thinking the same thing. On the parking lot? Put it on the parking lot. Put it right up there. That's a long walk for people who park on the other side. Mm. The but down. they could park there. I mean... They're going to have to walk anyway, aren't they? Where the yeah. other side is? <laughs> yeah. Even short, it's shorter, though, in the parking lot than it would be where the old building was, right? Yeah, if we put the triple wide in the parking lot, we probably will have room enough for maybe 10 cars. We still got the, the old parking lot. We still got the we old park. yeah, the parking lot. Yeah, the parking lot. Across, yeah, the old parking lot. Yeah. That's, hey, I'm, I'm for it. I'm just concerned about the look. You have a really nice building now. It looks a certain way. I don't know what this triple wide is going to look like thrown up there, but, you know, we can consider it. I understand. I understand. Well, yeah, I think I understand where you're going with that. I mean, I, I mean, I say, I mean, we we are not making a decision today, but it's an idea everybody should start thinking about, and maybe next meeting someone else will have something that's um, for or or not for for what we're trying to do. Yeah, by the next meeting, you ought to be able to go inside it. And yeah, so is that fine, guys? Uh, between now and the next meeting, we'll go look at it and see whether it's worth uh, worth a look. Okay. All right. Okay, okay. moving okay. right along to committee <laughs> recommendations. The first one is water the tea boxes, and I guess we don't need to worry about that anymore. <laughs> Since we're flooded, well, after you you sent the email, we we he actually started watering them. So, um, so we started taking care of that problem the minute we got this. Okay. One of the big member concerns always has been the front of number three and number front of number seventeen. Number three, I think we just need to haul in some topsoil because we we already put drainage in that in front of that green twice already. And you've recited it a million times. Yeah. Here, and I here, think, here, I'm, here's what I think. I think you either need to take the hill down or fill the gap in. That could be a possibility. But I mean, how good he put it in so his son couldn't drive the green? And they've done a million things there and never been able to grow grass there. Well, it's always just been a, a shady spot. you got spot. a million dollar tree there. They're not going I, think, I, I think once that tree goes down, grass starts growing there. But yeah, it's just me. I don't you got know. that tree insured for some <laughs> godly amount of money. It's got a lightning rod in it. In 17, you just, it just hits, anything it hits short berries. So what we talked Forever. about in the past was that we'll just get a bunch of dirt, pour it in front of that green, pack it, and re the top area. Well, you'd have to remove the existing turf, then fill then, well, and stick on top. You're an expert in now. 17, these on the list are being drained as long as number 15. We just couldn't get to it this year, and that's something we're going to get to. Okay, this as long as you got a plan, that we're happy. Yeah, we're going to trench it out. What's the timeline on that? When do you like to do that work? I'll be in the winter, so probably in December, January, around that area. Okay. Um, I asked you this before. Some people 
thought that we ought to leave those ball retrievers permanent. I personally don't think that's a good idea. We're going to remove them. Um, like I said, if we don't revert back a phase, we will remove them, flip the cups upside down. The ball will still be elevated enough for you to um, stick your little retriever to get it out. You won't have to stick your hand in the hole. I, I or, think that was a brilliant idea at the time. If we do that, if we don't do that, then we will do the foam. We probably can't get any foam till after the 1st of July. Because our credit card, yeah, I'm saying, our credit card's on lockdown. <laughs> Your credit card busted. Uh, so, so you're gonna remove the little ball? We're gonna it? remove it because they, uh, you know, it, I mean, what? Since I put them in, we've done close to ten, twelve thousand rounds. People, I mean, that's a lot of rounds, a lot of flicking. I mean, so, they're sticking now, and you got to beat them back. So now you got to, you got to, you got to work with it, and those things. I mean, as good as they are, That's what happened with one on there, if right? you have that many rounds, they're going to get some wear and tear. Some work better than the others now, um, but we need to remove them. And uh, probably if we remove them, we'll put them to the side. Well, they help keep the course open, and it was a yeah. great idea. Yeah, something like this hits great. again, we'll put them back on. We're not throwing them away by any means. Okay. But we can take them out and kind of resort to something else, something different. Okay, tee box on number 10. Mm -hmm. The red tee box. Can we not move it 20 feet towards the clubhouse so it's not sitting there like this? Mm -hmm. That is a... That, that, uh, Just move the markers. I don't care about the grass. I don't care about building up the box. I don't care. Just move the markers. Yeah. That actually was never even started to be one of the tees. That was a family tee and when they moved I everything know. forward. But we're already, we started last year. We're going to take that area by the cart path. We're going to get that grown in and we're going to move the, the blue and the gold tees back. Then the white tee will be back where the white tee is. And where the white tee is now is where the ladies' tee will be at. So that one down there y'all plan on now would just be the family tee. You like it, Doug? Yeah, I like that. Red tee guy got to hit her. So you get to be a red tee and then you won't like it. <laughs> so you definitely won't hit it in the water when it's moved back, right? As long as you don't. Yeah. What do you say about the water? You won't be able to reach the water now. Yeah. I'm for the red tee will be further back. You can hit driver and wasn't worried about the water. I was worried about it being it still being able to hit the green. Oh, you want to hit the green in one on the par four? Of course. I see. <laughs> and we're going to continue to mix up the flats. We are. Um, we still have those um, spots on the greens, and uh, mixing up the flags has made it more convenient for Doug and his crew to uh, maneuver around the bad spots. Okay, I snuck a couple more items in on Jenna that I didn't talk that's, about. That's fine. Um, I was the one that advocated for the monthly meetings. Now, and I'm leaving. So if, since you were here, and I think things have come along a lot better, if the group wants to change the frequency of the meetings, I think it's up to them. Um, they used to only be quarterly. And we weren't getting anything done because it took so, it long, so long to go through city council if it was a money issue. I, like I, so I, I guess it's up to y'all. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really, I mean, I would say have a couple more month to month. I mean, I got no problem with that. Okay, I just thought I'd throw that out there. Um, um, I personally think we ought to raise cart fees to $15. June 1, July 1, next physical year. Per person? Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. That's what I, I said. I don't think it's a good idea yet. I'll tell you why. Before you uh, go up on the fee, uh, you have to show <clears throat> this is why we're going up. Um, with the condition of some, and not definitely not all our greens. I feel like uh, most of the greens are in good shape. Just the, the ones that are bad are just, you know, the ones that are bad. With the changes that we're going to do with the tree cutting, and I guess I was talking to Doug about the tree issues and so on that will help the greens come back. And they were saying, wait till when I, I'm like, let's take them down. The first minute that money hits the budget, we need to go start cutting. Uh, or, or call the guy to get him out there to start cutting. 
I, I, I'm suggesting that we wait until our until we have our golf course exactly the way we need it to have it. Well, you're the guy. So I'm when we I'm go sure. up on our on our fees, we don't get those guys that say, "Well, Southern Wayne is charging this." They'll leave for a dollar. I've seen it. And every place else we go charges more. That's true. That's true. They charge in that dollar. That's true. Including Southern Wayne. That may be true. But I, I still say we wait. So the reciprocal thing ain't quite reciprocal. You might want to get into that. That's never been. Sorry? That's never been. The reciprocal is just to get on a golf course. That, that's never been. Well, here, here's the... Well, 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 to go over the Here's the deal. A reciprocal fee is entirely based on the on the on the on the golf course that allows it. If my reciprocal fee is twenty dollars, I don't care if yours is fifteen over there. That ain't I'll, the way it used to be. Well, that's, well, I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's golf course. It's golf course specific. Right. It should be. No, it should. Well, maybe it should be, but it wasn't that way when we started that. Well. The first of all, Wedgwood or Lane Tree or uh, Southern Wayne, it was all the same as Goldsboro. You didn't have to pay anything extra. Now the carts are at least a dollar more. That's crazy. No, Walnut Creek. The membership yeah. ought to be a lot higher. If that's it's membership crazy. related. No, it was only higher. Now Walnut Creek's another issue. Boy, I can't hear you, Doug. No, I was saying we were never. We were never higher than the other guys. We were always low. Wait, look, the rest of you know, guys, they, they always got it. Well, well, I tell you what, I will revisit. Now, I've been really in close contact. I'll tell you the, the two golf professionals I've been dealing with closest to most since I moved here is uh, Clarence Rose, of course, which we are, I wouldn't say our reciprocal with them is possible, but I've been dealing not with Lane Tree, uh, Brian. So, I mean, I can get together with these guys and we can put together a solid and more consistent plan for reciprocals and then we can put that up on the table again. Yeah, that'll be cool. Is that fine? So you guys, uh, next 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 month uh, or next meeting, I'll have something more right. tangible for us to eat up. And that would be a committee recommendation to council for approval? So we already got it. It's just a matter of yes, the, yes. No, no, no. Well, well, however you want to do yes. it. Yes, actually, um, yes, that is correct because well, I'm almost well, gonna, I'm almost gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna take a wild guess and say this is not an ordinance that reciprocals weren't approved or, or yeah, there's a there's a there's a rate you know ordinance right now to be a member in Goldsboro. Mm -hmm. I don't remember any reciprocal agreement in that ordinance. It's not. It's so not. you got to go back to council if you want to do something. You don't have to explain the economics behind that. That's up to you. You're the guy. No. that's. I, I'm just telling you what it used to be <laughs> and how where we go someplace else, it's not actually a reciprocal. Uh, and you know what? At the time, every time you come to me with that word used to be, I keep telling you that is not in line with government protocol. No, I didn't ever say it was. And what do I tell you? Reciprocals, you reciprocals are based on. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Chris. Yeah, you know, reciprocals are based on, on uh, green fees, not car fees. Um, it's allowing you to get onto a golf course that maybe you're not normally allowed to get onto say a Walnut Creek or a River Landing or, or what have you. It's, it's, it has nothing to do with the cart fees. Um, it's a cart fee or it's a charge that's just arbitrary. Um, I know when I was in the business, if we wanted to charge 25 for a uh, Kinston Country Club to come over, we just charge them 25 even though our uh, cart fee might have been 10 bucks. It's, it's about getting you on the golf course yeah. um, that you typically wouldn't be able to get onto. Well, uh, Chip, here's where we are with this. Here's where we are. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get with the uh, golf course um, directors, and we're going to decide on it. And after that, I have to come back here and get with council for council to approve it. I mean. This isn't you pay a member fee at Southern Wayne or wherever, and you play for free at Goldsboro. Correct? No, 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 no,
At one time, it was $15. So, I mean, of course, it's a double standard. If it goes down, like we're punching on Monday or Tuesday, then we have a right to receive. Well, you're not supposed to be paying one membership and, and, and get an opportunity to play five different golf courses. And I wouldn't right. call it a right, because <laughs> it's not. It's not a right of uh, passage to go play another golf course just because we're, we're having a tournament, you get to go someplace else and pay for $15. That's exactly what it is. It's not a right, no. If the golf course has allowed well, you to do it's not... It's you can get in all your government thing, but I'm just telling you how it was done okay, for well, the last 30 years. Well, let's, can, let's can, not go there. <laughs> We're wasting our time. Yeah, yeah. we got to get it right going forward. I can do that kind of thing. we got to just get rid of it. And, That's and exactly we got, right. We got it with That's what? exactly right. I can tell you what's going to happen, and this is just me. The council is going to deny it because there's no economic value other than making it convenient for other people to come into our golf course and play at a dis or really discounted rate or our members to go somewhere else and play at a discounted rate. We No I the plus to it was and the reason it was started is because when y'all were closed, we could go someplace else and play and not get screwed. It was a perk. By not being able to play. So it's a perk. Why that's that was the whole deal. Just to, I'm I'm telling you what the feel what my feeling is. And I'm just telling you where that. we had it. We had it at Wedgwood we do have it at Wedgwood. We've got it at uh, uh, Lane Tree, Southern Wayne, Timber Lake, and the one over. I can't think of the name of the one now. Fallen Creek and Duplin. Over here at Fallen Creek, yeah. yeah. The one that's out in the country between here and Smithfield. Cardinal. 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 We had all those. Cardinal. I, I want to make the question we get rid of all that period and just be done with it. That has nothing to do with Goldsburg Golf Course. Uh, there, there, there's nothing to, it's not in there right now, so you don't need to make a motion to make a change so that doesn't exist. We just drop a specific crap. It, it's something well, to look you at. You just can't play when Goldsburg's got a turn. Well, then you can go to Southern Wayne and pay $25, $26. Mm -hmm. where, where we've been paying 15 or 14 or whatever. Well, you can't, if, I mean, you're going to pay extra gas anyway. If you want, if you want to go, if you want to pay, if you want to play, you've got to pay. That's all it is. I'm going to tell you right now that what you guys were doing in the past was wrong. That's kind of what I, I didn't want to just, it's wrong. It's, it wasn't right. Whether you were doing it in the past 10, well, 20 years we, ago. We didn't do it. Y'all did it. That's, no, 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 no. I, no, no, no. I, just, said it I, just, I just heard what you just uh, said right there. I just Alan heard you. Rich, Jody, Rick, I just all heard. those guys set it up. He knows. <laughs> yeah, we didn't pay a dollar more. That's why I brought it up. I don't care what y'all do. Leave it up to Wells to pour gasoline and water on his way out. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> All right, next subject. Uh, the only other thing I got, and I thought you were going to bring it up, is there are times when we need more cars. Yeah, well, I mean. Every, yeah, I got I you one more. He's definitely aware of it. She's aware of it. Okay. Um, no so the bad. budget approved uh, a cart for the range. Yeah, so we're going to. So you get one car. back. We get one back for sure. There, yeah. there have been. A half a dozen times in the last month when we went up there and people were sitting there waiting for cars. It's been a lot more than that. Yes, Doug, you were trying to say something? No, no, I didn't. But, Dad, I got one more thing. Go, on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, what about water on the we making out with water on the course? I ain't been in a month, so I don't know. Water yeah. on the course? Yeah, water on the course. Drinking water. Oh, drinking water. Yeah. yeah. Good point. You know what I mean? Are we doing anything? Or? We haven't started putting out drinking water yet. Okay, well, I don't know. I don't know about this, but it's, I just had a, if you just came back from Rural Beach. So we have a half present right around. They, they, the people, they get to be your watch. We have a present right around. I, you know, our our 
fees, and, and you, I can be shut down, of course, if I say this, but right. I believe our fees, our golf playing fees, we are we are very cheap. Right, right, right. Number one, and um, I I will not agree, or I will, unless I'm told to, to give water to members as they come in the door, a bottle of water. I mean, no, that's... Yeah, yeah, not give. What I'm saying is about how to have a go around. Oh, have a park person. Yeah, a cock person go around because it's hot out here now. I right? can't. Yeah. First of all, I don't, I don't have a beverage card, and I can't staff anybody to do it. I don't have the staff for it. The suggestion has been made that the ranger just throw a cooler on the back. The ranger is actually our cart guy, yeah. the guy that's responsible for pulling out the carts. He does not have time, not not especially on weekends, especially on weekends. I was just wondering because the heat out there. <laughs> I get, yeah, thank the governor. <laughs> <laughs> what it is. I got, why is the bathroom closed? Uh, COVID-19. Governor. Well, hopefully they'll be open if we, we go up a phrase. We'll see. If it goes back, if we go to phase three, you're thinking it, they will I'm be thinking open? we can probably reopen them and clean them, um, clean them more, you know, and clean them at the end of the day or twice a day at least. <laughs> Um, now, I, I have taken the liberty of making more copies for keys for the women's bathrooms. And when a lady comes into play, I started this a couple of days ago, I give them a key, and then we just go behind them and clean the restrooms afterwards. Yes! But the men, I have not done anything for the men. I feel like the men can get by, yes, they but do. the women can't. Yes, so. you're right. <laughs> so I've been trying to take care of the ladies at least. Thank so you. If thank you. Play thank again. You. Stop by and pick up a key. <laughs> All right. Bless you. <laughs> One more question. Yeah. Do we plan to start shoot the bull anytime soon? No. Can, did we just talk about the ladies' bathroom? Why can't we leave it open like we do the public restrooms that are now open? Um, it, we will require somebody to go periodically clean. I'm, when I say at least every hour. Um, the cart guy on the weekends, he won't be able to do that, which is when we have... Why do we need to do it every hour? I mean, the public restrooms are, what, three times a day or something, but in, in the end, there's probably so much less use. As long as we have hand sanitizer there, water, soap, I would think it could so be used. For, so for our park restrooms, we just opened them up this past weekend, and we're still filling out, seeing how that's going to go, where we have them open a set time meaning uh, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So even if people in the park at 8, 30, 9 o'clock, they're not going to be able to get in the bathroom because we lock them at 8. But what we're doing is we're cleaning the bathrooms once a day in the morning, and then we're sanitizing the bathroom several times throughout the day. The reason we're able to sanitize the bathrooms throughout the day is when we started reopening things, part of our phase one was we put uh, some part-time staff out in our parks just to make sure people are doing what they're supposed to be doing and counting the number of park users. So those part-time staff that we have in the parks, they're going in and sanitizing the bathroom. And when I say sanitize, that's taking a uh, sanitizing spray bottle and the high contact surface areas, the faucets, the handles, the flushers, the levers, anything that people touch, that's what they're going in and spritzing. And we have signs up on the door for the, as people go into the bathrooms to let them know because, as Obi said, I mean, we can't have someone out there every hour on the hour. We can't have someone out there 24 hours a day. But that's just letting the public know that um, that's what's uh, going to happen. Now, for the women's bathroom on the golf course as well as the men's, if that's something y'all want to entertain, just know that, again, um, you know, the bathrooms is going to be clean and then at some point throughout the day it's going to be sanitized and I know there have been some concerns in the past about well you know the frequency of the cleaning of the bathrooms is it's not that we're cleaning the bathrooms anymore it's we're just sanitizing them throughout the day again to help um, prevent the spread no. of COVID-19. What about leaving a container of cleaner and, and sanitizer in the ladies' restroom and we can spray and spritz before we leave. I mean, that's a possibility, but again, it will have to be a sign that we will put on the door. 
to let people about. know to do that because again, you're talking about doing before you leave. That's yeah. why I'm sure you would do, but would every female do that? And so again, we're looking at liability as well. Just make sure everyone's aware because we don't want somebody. So why, but, but, I thought someone had done we, that. We all know we in a pandemic, so it behooves you to take precaution upon yourself, not everybody else. Right. I mean, you know, you, you go to a golf course, you have your wife, you have your love, you have to take care of yourself. Penny. Yes. So, so it should be. The liabilities. You already know what, what we yeah, think. Yeah, it's a liability issue. It's, it's, the liability is minimal, okay? Because in the end, you can't prove where you picked it up or where you didn't pick it up. What we need to do is the right procedures, just like we do in this building. There are signs posted all over, maintain social distancing, wash your hands, etc. So as long as we provide the supplies in a confined, controlled environment and do our job to clean it once a day and wipe it down occasionally, I think we're doing the right thing, so. Okay, well. If we're going to do that, then I think we should put water back out there because in the summertime when it's really, really hot, it, somebody's going to pass out. I mean, then again, that's they got on, on the on the individual. You know what I mean? I go grab some water, and we we got if we we depend so too much on everybody else, and not we're not taking the possibility of all our help. And Doug, are you getting all this? Okay. Yeah, so if you put a water uh, jug out there with the cups, right? Someone pulls a cup, it's a clean cup from the last cup. They may have to touch the spout somehow. Uh, you know, have hand, hand sanitizer with you or hand sanitizer available next to the water jug and use your hand sanitizer afterwards and then push balls. So We can go buy those $400, put your cup under it and it automatically pours the water. <laughs> I, I, I'm, uh, I mean, I guess we could put the water out. I, I'm not, I'm not for it for sure. That's never going to get clean. I mean, maybe just to it will get clean when the they one, get it. When maybe they, the one just to deter. I, I like them buying my two dollar water. You're the guy. It's your golf. Uh, you which one? <laughs> I like making my money. I like making the money in the shop. Two dollars a bottle. Don't get me started. <laughs> not a bad way to go either. I mean, but as far as um, putting somebody on the golf course dug with, with water, I, I, I can't do it yet. Okay. Uh, yet uh, is the word. I've actually thought about it, um, having uh, a beverage cart person out there on the weekend. Right. Uh, but I just can't do that yet. Right, right. Anybody else have anything else? New business? Chip, Ken? Go, go, go. Now make a motion we adjourn. What's the next meeting? July 15th. I'll see you in first. Second? Second. Okay, we're done. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.